Hello, welcome back to the channel, it's JPA here now, I'm just going to do a quick video uh, discussing the Celtic Rangers result from yesterday. Now obviously I didn't get a chance to do the video yesterday, I actually went to Glasgow to go to a concert yesterday, so I didn't really have time to do a video after the game, uh, so apologies for that, but uh, I'll just get straight into this guys. So yeah, finished Celtic 2, Rangers 1, uh, disappointing result again. That's now five matches without a win for Rangers. Uh, we're now 13 points behind in the league. I've already stated many times that I think the league's over. Uh, it clearly is now. There's no way we can possibly come back from that unless Celtic actually just completely crumbled. Um, I think even winning this game would have been really tough to, to actually get any headway in winning the league, really. Uh, but I'll just get into this game and uh, talk about the goals and stuff like that. Uh, now, obviously, first maybe 10 minutes, I thought Rangers actually started quite brightly. They played well. Um, but they, they just, I think after that, they started to kind of sit a little bit deeper, let Celtic kind of have the ball a bit. And it's very similar to the, the game at Parkhead, the first, uh, I think it was September, earlier in the season, where Celtic pretty much just dominated uh, the first half. Uh, they got their goal through a horrible mistake from us. Uh, we got a free kick on the halfway line, and I thought it was pretty stupid to to launch it into the box for there. You're never going to win anything. You you might get a second ball, uh, but usually nine times out of ten, when you throw the ball into the box for that area, it gets cleared for the the centre half. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, the ball broke to actually Daniel Candias, and instead of Candias normally being so composed on the ball. Uh, he gave it away just by simply trying to play a, a cross-field ball. Very silly to do that. Uh, really dangerous uh, when you're passing it across the pitch. You've got to make sure you, you hit your target. Uh, and obviously Celtic cut it out. They went up. Uh, Conor Goldson probably could have brought him down. As it felt to uh, Odson Edward. Uh, he didn't. Edward got past him and it was just a one-on-one -on -one with Worrell. And Worrell just didn't defend it well enough in my opinion. Didn't put a foot in. He just kind of backtracked, kind of just shimmied him along and let uh, Odson Edward get the shot on. McGregor's a wee bit unlucky, probably think he probably could have done better to save the shot. But unfortunately that was 1-0. Uh, and a couple of minutes later, an absolute horror mistake. Or mistaken judgement anyway from Morelos. Uh, we've said this so many times this season. And even uh, Gerrard's seriously getting pissed off for this now. Uh, Morelos has reacted to Scott Brown. Scott Brown's had a wee kick at him uh, off the ball and Morelos stupidly has reacted. Now, it's hard to defend Morelos for this. Uh, it's stupid, it's petulant. And you know Scott Brown's going to try and wind you up. Uh, he, just, he has to just walk away from these situations. Having said that, uh, I'm not going to go to mental on the whole Morelos situation because I've, I've read so many ridiculous comments on Facebook and stuff like that about Morelos. The, the fans are really turned on him considering a week ago he brought out that documentary and a lot of fans were praising him and saying how much they love Alfredo Morelos at the club and stuff like that and sorry that he might actually leave and the turnaround now where he's, oh, he's, a, he's a liability. He may well be a liability, but the facts are that he's scored 29 goals this season and I don't think it would be anywhere close to where we are sitting in the league right now if it wasn't for his goals. Uh, yeah, he's stupid. And not only was he missing for the rest of this match, but he's obviously going to get a, a ban uh, for probably, like, probably two three games at least. Uh, so we're going to be missing him for the next couple of really, really important games again. Uh, so yeah, after that, obviously, we're 1-0 down. Down to 10 men, Celtic really, really dominated the uh, possession of the football and we were probably lucky to go on at 1-0 at half time, to be honest. It probably could have been more. So we came into the second half and we actually started playing pretty well. We, we had a lot more possession of the football, particularly in Celtic's half, which we really didn't have in, this, in that first half at all. Uh, Kent started playing really, really well. He was getting on the ball, he was creating things. Uh, and eventually we got our goal. Uh, 
Neat played on the, the right hand side. Candias, uh, Tav into Candias. Candias back heeled it into Tav. Tav drove forward. Very similar to the goal for the four against um, Aberdeen, it was, where he kind of drives into the, the middle of the field and then passes it away. Kent still had a lot to do when he got the ball. Uh, he beat Ayer for pace, uh, took it round Boyata, and I was left with a one on one with the goalkeeper. Uh, he set it straight at the keeper for some weird reason and it's just went in. Uh, Scott Bain, I think, got a, a touch on the ball with his foot. Uh, so he was pretty lucky that the, the ball actually went in. But it was a good run, good finish, and you could see what it meant to Ryan Kent. Uh, I'd love to sign him on a permanent basis. Whether we can do that financially or not, I'm not too sure. Uh, but after that, we started to come into the game even more than that. I think the goal gave us a real lift, and we had a couple of chances. And towards the end, um, Ryan Kent again created something out of nothing, pulled it back for Ryan Jack, and Ryan Jack all I had to do was keep his composure and hit the the back of the net. But it felt his left foot, his weaker foot. Might have took a slight bobble, uh, but he's out over the bar, and it's a real, real, really good chance and a wasted opportunity, uh, considering what what happened. Uh, so we kept pressing, even though we missed that opportunity, and you kind of thought that oh, we might actually get a draw out of this game, surprisingly, considering we're down to ten men. Uh, but Celtic actually went down to ten men as well. They made their three subs, and uh, Ryan Kent again. Turned uh, boy, uh, Boyata, it was, inside out and it tweaked his hamstring because of that. Uh, so they ended up playing the last 10, 15 minutes with, with 10 men as well. It's kind of evened it up a bit. But I thought we were in the ascendancy and I thought we probably could have went on to even perhaps sneak the game. Uh, but an uncharacteristic mistake from uh, Tavernier. I really don't know what he was thinking. Kamara gets the ball. Pass it to Tav, and Tav, for some unknown, sometimes he does this, he, just, he passes it uh, to Goldson, and Goldson clears it up the field for a, a chance at an attack. I think that's what he was going for, but it was absolutely not even half the power that he needed. It was a really, really horrendous pass. McGregor was on it in a flash, played it through to Edward. Uh, Defence was completely no set up to defend it. Uh, it felt a Forrest in the box and McGregor had absolutely no chance uh, and Forrest wins the game for him. Really, really disappointing. Uh, there was obviously incidents in the game which I'll talk about in a few minutes. So first thing I wanted to talk about was uh, we had a little bit of a penalty claim in the second half uh, where there was a coming together between Tavernier in the box and uh, Sinclair. Now I think anywhere on the pitch that's a, probably a free kick. Uh, it was a soft one to give. I think uh, if I'd been given against my club, I'd be really disappointed. Uh, but it's one of the ones where you claim for it. Kind of, kind of blame the, the referee for not giving it. Uh, so I just thought I'd talk about that. Obviously, the next thing is the Morelos incident. I'm just going to touch on it again. Obviously, Gerard's really, really unhappy. Uh, I'll put up a wee quote. Uh, what Gerard said. This is what he said about it. So there you go, clearly not happy with Morelos in that situation. Uh, there, was, there was another one involving Brown again. Surprise, surprise. Uh, he was winding up Kent and Kent swung for him. Now, I don't think he connected with a punch at all. I think he may have kind of caught him here and kind of pushed his face away. Uh, but that's probably going to be picked up by the compliance officer. Obviously, sports scene have done their job and uh, highlighted it enough so that the compliance officer will watch that and... Uh, He'll get a ban for that, probably. Uh, the next one is Halliday. Now, I can't actually remember if Halliday was booked because of this incident or whether it was uh, another incident that he got booked for. But Al Halliday got booked right at the end of the game. Uh, and after the final whistle, he squared up to Brown uh, to confront him for go down the fans and stuff like that. Uh, and it's continued right down the tunnel. So he's got a, a second yellow and he'll now be missing the game against Hearts, which puts us in a really... Difficult position because now we've got Halliday out at left back and we've also got Borna Barris that's injured. So the only two options we've got is to play Flanagan out of position again or play well uh, Wallace in there. But he hasn't played all season. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is the sectarian singing from Celtic fans. Now obviously 
a couple of weeks ago against Kilmarnock, uh, Stevie Clark complained about sectarian singing, getting called an orange bastard and what have you. Uh, they sung the same song, uh, same song to Stephen Gerrard. Uh, I'm not complaining, it happens every week. But if there's a problem with like, getting sung to Stevie Clark, there's a problem with us singing it, why is there not an issue with Celtic fans singing it to Rangers? Uh, doesn't make sense. I don't think I'll get any media coverage whatsoever. Uh, I just thought I'd point that out. The main thing that really, really concerns me right now is that we've got two tough games before the split in Hearts and Motherwell. Always kind of tricky to play Motherwell. They're quite yeah, physical and they give us a lot of problems. Hearts are the same. Uh, but my con main concern really is the fact that we're 13 points by now. We've got two tricky games before the split and then after the split we've also got to play top six teams who we've found really hard to beat this season. We're also going to have to play looking like Hibs again. Pro uh, definitely going to have to play Hearts again. We're going to have to play Kilmarnock again who we've struggled against. We're going to have to play Aberdeen again and we're going to have to play Celtic again. Albeit we're at home for the Celtic game or we should be. Uh, but it's worrying times that if we're struggling right now, how are we going to get these points to at least keep up with Celtic? I don't know what, obviously we're not going to win the league, but the fact is, if we keep dropping points, it's how many is it going to be? Is it going to be 15, 18, 20, 21, 20 plus points that we're behind? That's the worrying thing for me. Uh, I'll try and remain positive. Obviously we've got a home game coming up against uh, Hearts and we should beat them, hopefully. Uh, I'll do, hopefully do another video for that. Uh, but that's the thing that's concerning me right now. And that's something I just wanted to get out of. So that's me done, guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please keep subscribing to the channel. Thank you for the people that have subscribed already. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, hit that like button. Help the channel out. Um, believe it or not, hitting the thumbs down actually helps the video as well, gets out of there to more people uh, and helps my views obviously. So thanks very much guys and I will see you in the next video which will be tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow.